Ahoy, this is Zdenka. Last few days I've been showered by so many questions. I am always showered by these type of questions. What camera should I get? Or should I start vlogging with my smartphone? Or should I get a regular camera? And I would say every fifth question I get is which smartphone gimbal is the best? My personal question is how long will it take before this is the end to smartphone gimbals? I would like to discuss all this. I would like to discuss on what is happening. What I just saw yesterday, what I was filming last few weeks. Let me give you hints on making the decision for yourself. There were two videos I filmed at the exact same location at the exact same time of the day. The only difference was that it was filmed a few weeks apart. The first video was filmed with the iPhone 11 Pro and DJI Osmo Mobile 3. So let's look at that one. The second one was filmed with Canon M50, Viltrox Speed Booster, and some EF lenses. Let's play that one as well. You say, take me on a treasure hunt. I long for something new. Have you heard the fairies when they sing and dance? There was a significant difference between the first one and the second one, not just because I was filming a person in the second one. Let's not talk about that. Let's look at the colors, the sharpness, the depth of field, the overall look. Which one do you prefer? In case you are wondering what it is, that's my new shelving system, which I ordered for my studio, so the background when I'm filming gets a little bit busier. Vlogging on smartphone is very convenient. We already have it in our pockets. We don't have to drag the big camera bags. And you just pull it out and you just start filming. I think that vlogging with smartphone is very convenient for someone who has a channel where the visual side of the things is not so important, such as the content and the spoken words or the action. And I like to use smartphone myself as well when I'm traveling for the family time, for my personal purpose, or even partially professionally, because I actually use it for the social media, which is part of this thing. But if you have a channel like me, for example, where the visual side of things is more important than anything else, then mirrorless cameras such as Canon M6 Mark II might be an option for you because you need to bring the visual side of things to the top-notch quality. Do you need to go all the way up to camera like Canon R5 or R6 which just came out? No, not really. I am perfectly happy right now with the Canon M6 Mark II which has the perfect minimal requirements I need for what I'm doing right now. Unfortunately, Canon M50 is not meeting the minimal requirements anymore because 
filming in 120 frames per second only gives me 720p. I purposely filmed the last cinematic sequence with Canon M50 in 120 frames per second to see it for myself. And when I was watching it on my smartphone, it was fine. But when I was watching it on a computer and then I watched it on TV, it was simply disappointing because 720p, the quality is not simply there. So it really ensured me that I'm doing the right thing, that Canon M6 Mark II is right now my main camera. Before, I'm gonna say again that it's not good enough for me anymore. On the other hand, if you are going to do a lot of professional work, a lot of client's work, then I would get camera like Canon R, for example. What I would do is to get a camera which meets my minimal requirements and the budget is kind of good, so I still have a lot of money left for buying very good quality lenses. Because if you're gonna invest a lot of money in a great expensive camera and then you realize that you have no money left for the lenses, you're not gonna help yourself in increasing quality. You're gonna decrease it if you're gonna go the other way around and you're gonna start buying cheap lenses which are not gonna help. When I purchased this iPhone 11 Pro two months ago, I was impressed by the stabilization. And at that time, two months ago, I was thinking about the future of the smartphone gimbals, how it's gonna develop in the future. And the same thing is happening with the mirrorless cameras. Look at the newly released Canon R5. The stabilization is just unreal. Sure, for some stuff, you will still need a gimbal. When it comes to smartphone, my thoughts were about the built-in stabilization. And there was a slight idea two months ago, which crossed my mind a little bit about built-in gimbals, but I thought, oh, this is gonna happen. We are talking about a few years ahead, a lot further in the future. Well, was I ever wrong? Things are moving at much faster speed than I originally thought. Yesterday, I was watching a video, a review of a brand new smartphone with four cameras, four lenses, and built-in gimbal. It is Vivo X50 Pro smartphone. I'm gonna link that video in the video description so you can watch it after this one. Unbox therapy made it. All I gotta say that the footage was interesting. Is this the starting point of the road towards the end of smartphone gimbals era? Let me know what your thoughts are. Write them below in the comment section. As I look at it, the stabilization and smartphones are gonna get only better with time. And now that we have actually a smartphone which has already built in the gimbal in the smartphone, it's just gonna be a matter of time when all the other brands are gonna incorporate it into their smartphones. I wish I could try that smartphone. I honestly would love to try it. I probably won't because I'm not gonna have access to it, but I wish I could try it. What I'm thinking that it's gonna take a long time before all the other smartphones will be replaced with this new era of smartphones, with all those four lenses and all the built-in gimbals. It will take a long time. It'll be certainly interesting to see the direction of the smartphone gimbals we have right now. We might not even need them in the future, but still people will need to know how to get those shots just with the smartphone if they're gonna have the gimbal already incorporated in the smartphone. Right now, those smartphone gimbals are helping us to get the visual effect effortlessly because look at the Moza gimbal, which has the moment feature or look at the DJI, which has the story feature where you're literally just holding the gimbal and it moves the smartphone on its own. You just press the button and wait, and then you have the final result. You don't have to do much. You don't need to know much. I think it's just gonna be a matter of time until the app is actually developed on the smartphone to do the same thing, such as those physical gimbals. How long is it gonna take? One year, two years, three years? couple of months, who knows?